Welcome to another video on Microsoft Access. Today, we're going to talk about how to navigate the Forms Property Sheets. Uh, the Property Sheets, let me pull up my Access database here. The Property Sheets in a form, so let's open this form and we'll go into Design View. The Property Sheets sit over on the right hand side. Now, if the Property Sheet is not there, it's just blank, you can find the property sheet up here in the on the design ribbon here and when you click on it it'll bring up the property sheet for you now when you first bring up the property sheet for you this text box here is incredibly important this tells you what it what the cursor is pointing to and therefore what the property sheet is dealing with so at this point these are all the properties that you can set for a form as a whole so notice when this button up here is clicked it'll say form right here if i click in the header it'll say form header and then it'll give you this unique properties that are just for that header so if i click on this text box it'll show me that it's pointing at the company text box okay and and but all the way through this as you click on things if you click in the background of the detail it'll give you just that detail and these properties can be set for whatever color for example that you want to set on the background of the form so what we want to do is we want to look at a few of these uh, items here we've got it set to all right now but um, there are four other tabs that allow us to sort and filter down the information to what we actually want to address so let's go look at that the form first if we look at format of the form i'm going to just hit on the highlights of the most important properties that you're probably going to be working with for example the caption what do we want this form tab up here to say well i've wrote written in here that i want that caption to say columnar but i can have it say anything I want to so company info so you see that when I set this that what I want to do is of course change this tab but it's it's not going to change what's going to change here is when I put it back in design in form view uh, that that'll show up here as the information on the tab what the information on the tab here when you're in design view points to is the name that is on the left hand side so in this particular form we have it set now to single form but i could have continuous form or data sheet view continuous form means that the person would then scroll through record after record okay and since this particular form basically fills the whole screen each record would be basically a whole screen and they they, they would scroll through it so uh, data sheet view you'd see it in in columns just like you would a, a spreadsheet query uh, pardon me a spreadsheet or a, a regular query or looking at just a table in data sheet view most of the time your forms will be single form and so we'll leave it at that okay so now here is three here now the user has the ability over here on this ribbon to see it in whatever format you want to them to see it in right now you see over here that they can see it um in form view and they could norm not see it in data sheet view but watch what happens when i say yes there now this changes over here and now they can see put the form in data sheet view and have that option if you want to let them have it and then layout view now a lot of times when i'm preparing a database to go public i will turn both of those off if i only want to see let them see it in form view i will turn the other two off if I only want to let them see it in data sheet view, that's the view that I will allow. So that when you go over here, you can just go design it or you can see it in form view. And, and that's the limitation there. So those three end up working together and can be significant. You can put pictures behind it if you want. There's none chosen right here. That would just go behind the form as a whole. Now, you'll notice if I go cl click the header here that I don't have the option to put a picture here in the format. Okay, in back here, I do believe I do have, nope, I don't have an option to put a picture as a whole. So the only place you have an option to put a picture on is the full back of the, of the form. And sometimes that's a, a good way to pretty up and make, uh, make your forms look very nice. 
um, as you go through here, there's there's some items down here that are in, that are good to know about. First of all, you can choose the border style. You can tell it that it's not going to be sizable, for example, so that it, it goes full screen and doesn't allow them to do minimized or put it uh, in a window or resize that window so that you can control uh, the size of the form in the application. Now the border style could be thin, it could be also a dialogue style. You could also change those two items as well. Choose whether you want record selectors. So when you've got it in form view, you'll notice that it has a has a record selector over here. Okay, this record selector allows you to check the particular record. And it's important when you have it in datasheet view because you have a lot of records all in a row here. Well, here the record selector just selects the one record that's on the screen because I have it in form view. So that's not too useful. So a lot of times I'll remove that record selector to clean up the form. The next thing is, do I want navigation buttons? Do I want those to appear on the form? And the navigation buttons, if you look, are these buttons right down here. And do you want those? Do you want them to be able to go forward and back based on this navigation? Or do you have navigation controlled on your form and therefore you want the navigation on the form to be used and you don't want them to rely on this navigation down here? If that's the case, you can just turn off the navigation buttons and say no there. And what you have there is no navigation buttons down here. So you can remove those. Okay. So the next thing down here is, do you want dividing lines? Well, if you had a form that was a multi-form view, instead of single form, uh, dividing lines would be important between each of your records. Uh, and of course, it's not important for single form. Uh, do you want scroll bars? Do you want this up and down scroll bar here or this scroll bar to appear here? Well, right now we have it all on one page, so we're not seeing scroll bars. But if this were minimized like this, all of a sudden we'd see scroll bars. Do you want the user to be able to see that or not? Or do you want them to make sure they don't put it in a window, but stay full screen so that this window is always big enough to see the entire form? It, it's totally your design choice there. So basically this format page right here as a whole, especially as it focuses on the form itself, tends to be very much a uh, getting it ready right for the end when you're gonna deploy type of, uh, type of a screen there. So I kind of bypassed the colors just a little bit, but if you want to choose colors, you have to, to not be on the form view, you have to be in the individual items here. So if you click here, you can see that you can check the back color here. Um, and in checking the back color here, it kind of gives you some themes and so forth that keeps you kind of in a box. But you can also, by hitting this ellipse, choose uh, the spe specific color uh, that you want based on the colors, that the standard colors or theme colors that, that are given here. You can also then do the same by clicking down here in the detail page. You also see the back color and then you see an alternate back color. So if you have an alternate background color, such as behind a, a button here, you can also set those to set off the buttons and make sure that they, uh, that they look uh, the way you want them. Let's go ahead and uh, move on from the format screen here and uh, over on data. Now you won't find much data behind the pages, the header or the detail or the footer or the page footer or page header. Those items, of course, don't have data in them. You have data behind the actual text boxes and drop-down list boxes and all the controls that we'll talk about in a later video. So when you have a particular item on the screen, the data tab is effective for you to, to use. And then this control source tells you the field here so it tells you the, this is the field list that we put onto the screen when we first made this form. And so company is the name of this, the field that is supplying the data behind this text box. It duplicates that name over here in the label. So if you want to edit uh, this label, of course, you're not gonna do it under the data form because you don't have, you don't have data behind a label. You have data behind the text box. So based on the context of the item that's selected, you are able then to change the 
uh, different tabs and this in, in fact is the data tab. Now you can have a default value for a particular form so that if let's say for example pretty much everybody's in the same zip code you could default a value to zip code and then when you overwrite it it'll it'll put the overwritten value in the table uh, otherwise if you leave it alone it'll put the default value in to the table when you fill out the form it, that can be pretty useful especially if you want to make sure that if the value is supposed to be zero that zero actually gets put in there and that you don't have to rely on the user to to remember to fill in that field with a zero at that point so uh, default values can be particularly useful. So let's go look at, now that we know kind of what data is, and we'll get more to that later, the events. Events are really, really cool. Now, if you decide to put a button on your form, for example, uh, a button up here allows you to create a, a, an event. We're ta we talked a little bit about buttons before. Okay, so let's go ahead and print a table. And we can go ahead and click OK, and we can choose what table to print. Well, this is the uh, columnar table that is pointed to the company um, or customers. Yeah, customers tab. So let's go next. And we can either leave it at the picture that has this printer icon on it or put this text in or change the text to whatever we want. And if we click next and finish, Okay, so what we see then is that there is a, an event procedure underneath this in the onClick function. And then here's the event procedure, and it'll take us to some uh, VBA code, which we haven't really touched on much yet. And the VBA code then uh, allows this to execute a print function, printing the particular table, which was the customer's table that we had pointed to. So if we put this in, Design view, we'll see that button sitting right there. We could have put this button up here in the header too, which would um, be a smart place to put it. I like also to put um, an on-click function also on the screen, uh, usually up here that allows the um, person to exit it, exit the form. And then I go over here to, to format under here and I get rid of the control box. Uh, actually, the control box. The control box, if you have the minimize and and, um, and put in a window button up there. Um, the close button, if I say no here, I would need to supply a close button up here for people to use. And uh, I would go to form operations, close form, and next, that's the exit doorway, and finish it. And I've got a close button here. And if I look at my event here again, I have an on-click function for this, which is close the form. If I put this in, in uh, design view, I see that this close button is now grayed out. The users can't use it. They're forced to use this close button to go ahead and close the form. And it'll ask me if I, if I want to, to save it because I've made a bunch of changes at this point. I'm gonna click cancel so I can go back to design view. Okay. Now, other is everything that can't fit in either the event or data or format tabs. And a lot of times you'll see various items here. If you see, like for example, under the text box, it's gonna be different. Um, you could put a control context tip. Like if you, if, if you feel that the users need a little extra help, you can float the mouse over here and get the control tip to tell them what to put in that field. Um, and, and so forth. It's just a lot of other miscellaneous ways that you can uh, deal with the particular properties that are all on the form. And then if you're just unsure which tab it's going to be in, you click the all and you get a conglomerate of everything available for a particular item that you have selected on the screen. So you have the ability then to just search for it and but after a while you get familiar with, I want a format item, or I want a data item, or I want an event item. And you'll have those selected because all together can tend to be a little bit onerous to hunt and peck and find something. Because um, their order isn't my order for some reason. Uh, never seems to be lined up the way I like to see it lined up. So I hope this has helped you a little bit to get familiar with what a property sheet is and what it can do for you. I haven't covered everything by any stretch of the imagination. So you need to go in and go ahead and explore and set these settings, see what they do. 
um, play around a little bit with them and find the ones that you do. Find a good manual or Google is your friend to find out things that you can do with forms that uh, are a little bit more obscure. Uh, a lot of times those will be set in a property sheet someplace. So um, thanks for joining me and we'll hope to see you again. Thanks. I want to thank you so much for viewing this video. We have great content on, on the site and I'm putting more content out every single day. There's a link to one of them on the side of the screen over here. Also, please help me grow the channel by subscribing. So hit that subscribe button a little bit lower on the other side of the screen and hope to see you again. Thanks.